Hello guys, Colin here. Now recently off of eBay I picked up this little Reslo sound ribbon microphone. This is a wonderful piece of vintage 60s British engineering but unfortunately it needs a little bit of a repair job to get it back to working to its full potential. Now if you don't know how a ribbon microphone works in there is an exceptionally thin aluminium foil ribbon suspended under tension between some magnets inside the microphone head here. When sound waves pass through the microphone, the ribbon vibrates and because the ribbon is a conductive material inside a magnetic field, when it moves it generates small voltages and currents. That small voltage is pumped through a transformer inside the microphone handle and that boosts up the voltage to a standard where you can deal with it with PA systems and recording interfaces. Now due to the nature of the ribbon inside these microphones being so thin, that makes them exceptionally delicate pieces of equipment, so dropping, mishandling or even breathing too harshly into the microphone can render it useless. Now this was sold as not working on eBay and due to it being a ribbon microphone I fully expected the ribbon to be broken. But when I got it and opened it up, uh, did my first inspections, I was quite surprised to realise the ribbon was actually intact, although a little bit slack. On further inspection it turned out that what was causing the microphone not to work was some wires disconnected. Once those were reconnected the microphone worked and I thought that's all I would need to do. But that wasn't the case when I started to test this microphone a little bit further I realised there was some mechanical vibrating ruining an otherwise clean and clear signal. Essentially that ribbon had lost tension over time and was now vibrating against the mesh inside the motor housing. So there's only one thing for it, we have to make a new ribbon for this microphone. This is what we're going to use to make our ribbon. It's 2.5 micron aluminium foil. A micron is a one millionth of a metre, that's a thousandth of a millimetre. Uh, to bring it into context, the thinnest human hair is around 17 microns thick. So this stuff is exceptionally thin, delicate, and very easy to tear, crumple, and ruin entirely. Just cutting it is going to prove difficult. I'm using a fresh scalpel blade for the best sharpness I can get. Anything more blunt than this and the foil will just tear. The new ribbon is longer than it needs to be but we're going to lose some length during corrugation. Corrugating the ribbon will allow it to be held under tension while still being elastic enough to move freely. An exceptionally important thing for a ribbon and a microphone to be able to do. For this I'm going to run the foil between two plastic gears. My first attempt I'm going to use this little jig that I've made out of Lego, although I suspect I could probably get better results from gears with a higher density of shallower teeth. Once corrugated, we need to put the ribbon under tension. The tension of the ribbon will determine much about the sound of the microphone. Too tight and it'll be too bassy and boomy and too slack and we're back to the same situation we were in before. Not enough volume and you're going to get the potential of it vibrating against the motor housing, ruining your microphone sound. And now we've got the microphone back together after that very tense and heart-stopping procedure. But I bet you're wondering what it sounds like now. Well, actually, you've been listening to the Reslo Sound microphone all the way through that voiceover section you've just heard. I'm actually very surprised I managed to get this microphone to work on my first attempt at re-ribboning. It's a very delicate, uh, very fiddly process, and I'm surprised I didn't ruin half the foil in the process. But of course, you don't come to my channel to hear me talk into a microphone. You've come here to hear what it sounds like in a guitar context. So I'm going to put this Reslo Sound ribbon microphone onto my guitar cab alongside uh, my dynamic Sennheiser 609 and we'll see a little bit of a comparison between the two, mix them and you'll be able to see how good this sounds on a guitar cab. <laughs>
So there you have it. I've got a lovely little vintage microphone from the 60s. And I'll be using this quite a lot on a lot of recordings from now on. I absolutely love this thing. And I've got a little bit of a notion to buy up some more broken ribbon microphones, especially vintage ones, and repair them so I can have a nice microphone collection without even spending too much money. Anyway, if you like this video and want to see more of my content, you can remember and subscribe. Uh, I'll be bringing more content out in the future and subscribing is the best way to see that. I'm also available on all the social media and you can leave a comment in the comment section below if you want to talk to me about anything at all. But for now, that's all I've got to say. So for me and the Resolusound microphone, we say keep it loud, and I'll see you later.